Hi, Sam here for licklibrary.com and welcome to this video on five free backing tracks that will improve your playing. The previews of these are available at licklibrary.com and you can get them in the description below. Let's dive in with the first backing track. <music> So that short jam was over a backing track from Tom Quayle's 51 Modern Legato Licks course. It's a really good backing track to develop your phrasing with some of the legato licks that he shares. And this particular backing track is pretty simple. It's just vamping around two chords. We've got this A minor 7 to a D dominant 7. Now these are the two and the five chords in the key of G major, which means actually to play over these two chords, we could see the home scale as A Dorian, which is the second mode of G major. When it goes to D7, we're then temporarily playing the D mixolydian mode. Now, when thinking legato wise or longer licks, it's helpful to think of bigger patterns, but when it comes to playing more melodically, we can really highlight just the chord tones. So we could think of an A minor 7th arpeggio, then a D7 arpeggio. We could try and do a continuous arpeggio exercise where we play eight notes of the A minor, and then go eight notes from the nearest available notes in D7. Some notes will be shared, but we're going to keep on going anyway by moving to the next available note in A minor 7. Now that might sound like quite a mechanical exercise, but that's going to get you really used to changing between those two arpeggios. And this backing track is a really good opportunity to try that out and also work on your phrasing. The groove is a nice tempo where you can try to improvise long sequences of notes in real time. And that's very much part of Tom Quayle's teaching style and method as well within the course. So check it out. So that track was from Rick Graham's Jam with Rick Graham course. I love Rick Graham's backing tracks. They're always quite emotive, very atmospheric, and they've got a nice mixture of electronic elements in there. And he always chooses interesting chords. Now this one is fairly straightforward. However, there's so many twists we can add, and you can learn more about this from his course because he talks about three different layers of fretboard visualization in order to get different types of harmony going over these simple set of chords. What are the chords? We've got A minor. E minor, F major 7, and then we have this interesting chord. This is a, a it's an F major triad over a G bass note. I could also play that up here, which kind of works as a dominant 7. And then we actually finish off with this altered chord, now eagle eyed and eared viewers will notice that is an E7 sharp 9, aka the Jimi Hendrix chord. And what's great about this track is you can really focus on playing with lots of space, just highlighting the chord tones. And 
and we can focus on getting nice melodies that connect those chord tones. Also that E7 sharp 9 at the end gives us a few opportunities to play some slightly altered licks. We could, first of all, without going too crazy, we could just play an E dominant 7th arpeggio there. So we could be highlighting A minor pentatonic in the A minor scale for most of this track. On that last chord. Now E7 sharp 9 is interesting because you've got a major third and the sharp 9 is technically a minor third. So we have this kind of lovely clash so we can mix up those. The altered scale will work nicely for that. Or a nice little trick that I like to use is if you take an E7 chord here, but we then we're going to play an arpeggio of D minor 7 flat 5. So the sixth arpeggio in F melodic minor is going to be a minor 7 flat 5 arpeggio. E altered is part of that tonality. That's kind of how that works, but over E. It works as a really nice sort of tense group of notes, but you don't have to use them all. You can just use one or two of those and it's going to sound pretty cool. All right, so that's it for the Rick Graham track. So next up, we've got this great backing track from Danny Gill's course, Quick Licks, Joe Bonamassa. This is a shuffle style blues in the key of G. We're going to have a G dominant 7. And what I wanted to highlight here is it's always good to be able to phrase over a blues. And what blues can really teach us is that it sounds best to start with smaller areas of fretboard and really work on them to get cool sounding phrases rather than just playing tons of scale patterns. And one of the most common blues tricks is known as the blues triangle. I've seen it referred to. So actually, because we're in the key of G, we've got G here on the 8th fret B string. We've got, we've got the uh, note A, which is the 9th on the 10th fret. We've got the 6th uh, interval over G uh, on the 9th fret G string. And these are known as the kind of the blues triangles. So if I go... And we can sort of bend that 10th fret up a semitone. And then you get the minor third over G. Bend it up a tone, you get the major third. So there's lots of cool stuff you can do of just taking that blues triangle and finding it in different areas, of course, as well. So you can't go wrong with practicing your blues jams. It's going to be something us guitarists end up doing a lot. So it's good to get used to phrasing over that structure. Next up, we've got another brilliant Danny Gill course. This is a classic from the Lick Library archives. This is from his Rock Essentials course. I transcribed all the examples for this course um, into tab recently over, over COVID actually, a couple of years ago now, it's not recent. Um, but I had a great time looking through all these licks. I highly recommend this course. If you're looking at getting into rock soloing, this is brilliant. There's so much to it. There's building up those classic rock licks. There's great solos to learn. He breaks it down. Danny Gill's a great teacher. This particular backing track comes with the course, it's one of the solo studies and you will hear this as well in the guitar interactive ad reel at the start of each issue. This is the backing track you hear, it's an F sharp minor and one of the reasons why I liked it is I could actually practice my 16th note kind of Paul Gilbert like phrases, you know, in, if I'm taking a, a F sharp Aeolian pattern. <laughs> 
you know, being able to play that in time. When I started out learning to play shred guitar, I thought it was about playing everything as fast as humanly possible. But when you hear the shred greats, actually they're playing very high subdivisions, which means small versions of the beat divided, um, really in time, but fast. And it actually creates the illusion of even more speed when something's played really well in time. So this is a really good backing track to practice some of those rock licks from the course over, and also take some of your favorite licks over this as well, and see if you can apply it in an improvisational setting. Last up is one of my own backing tracks from my course, Contemporary Tapping Arpeggios. Now this is a synth style E minor thing. And in fact, I had composed a etude, a solo study to work on string skipping tapping. Um, and a whole, that whole course is about developing those ideas and moving them around and improvising with them. However, as you just heard, I didn't do any tapping. Because um, I also like the fact that you can use this backing track for developing simple phrases and working on vibrato. And one of the things I noticed in my own playing is sometimes I am too quick to go to vibrato straight away on notes. If you play a note, you can leave it without vibrato. But sometimes it can be tempting, especially in the throes of, a, of an improvisation, just to go. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying anything wrong with that. However, sometimes it can kind of sour the solo if the vibrato is not kind of appropriate for the song. And there's, there's no right or wrong vibrato, but it's that lack of intention which sometimes can lead us astray or make us think, oh, that doesn't sound quite right to me. So a good way of practicing that intentionality is by actually playing vibrato on certain beats. I might choose to play a note for a whole bar of one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four. Now I'm gonna add vibrato, I kind of did it subconsciously there, but add it on the second beat. So one, two, three, Four. One, two, three. Let's do it on the third beat. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Let's do it on the end of two. So one and two and. One and two and. Oh, a bit early there. See, it's difficult. Give it a try. It's a really good exercise. And actually, I think it will make you feel far more in control of your phrasing if you practice that. So that's my backing track from Contemporary Tapping Arpeggios. So there we have it. I hope you've enjoyed this video, looking at some different approaches over backing tracks. One final note. I would like to say that when you play over backing tracks, they are often you know, between three to six to eight to 10 minutes sometimes. And in a realistic playing scenario, you're not gonna be playing a solo for 10 minutes unless it's some kind of Johnny Winter track or Gary Moore track, um, where there's lots of opportunity to do that kind of thing. Now, I think it's helpful to take these tracks and just figure out what the sections are and where they repeat and see if you can create sort of mini frames around each of these and phrase of intentionality. You know, what kind of solo could you do in eight bars with just one string? What kind of solo could you do in just six bars or four bars of the of the track, depending what sounds natural uh, with a certain technique or a certain melodic line? So actually starting your solo, going through the solo and ending the solo, that's something I'm working on is actually getting to a good end. It can be easy to go on forever, but can we make a really good kind of storyline where it takes the listener on a journey and we can finish the solo in a cool way with control and it's improvised and it's us. So there we have it. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Be sure to leave us a comment. Do you like practicing along to backing tracks? Do you make your own backing tracks? How do you practice along to backing tracks? Let us know in the comments below. If you'd like to be notified when we upload more free guitar lessons here, then be sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell button to be notified when we next upload. If you'd like to take your guitar playing to the next level, Lick Library has tons of courses around theory, licks, improvisation, songs, tone, and much more. Plus, you can also get a personalized learning path through the course with our one-to-one -one mentorship, which is part of your membership cost monthly. So check out the link in the description below to find out more. We'd love to see you there. Thanks for watching.